Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, video tutorial on Canizaro reaction. Um, so let's first look at the definition of a Canizaro reaction. Now this reaction um, occurs in aldehydes, both aliphatic or aromatic, which do not have alpha hydrogen atoms. And they on reacting with a strong base with a high concentration undergo a reaction in which every two aldehyde molecules react with each other such that one gets oxidized to yield acid salt and the other gets reduced to a primary alcohol. The important condition is that there should not be a good living group attached to the carbonyl group. Now um, this is the aldehyde group, the functional group, the carbonyl carbon with the hydrogen attached and the carbon that is attached to the functional group that's called alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon. And if there are any hydrogens attached here, these are called alpha hydrogens. Alpha hydrogens. This is the alpha hydrogen. Okay. So this is what we should not be having. The, quest, the, the, the definition says not have alpha hydrogen atoms. So this is a very important condition here. And another thing it says is we use strong base and one aldehyde becomes acid salt other becomes primary alcohol so let's understand how this is going to make the reaction happen how is aldol oh, sorry excuse me can is our reaction going to happen yeah because the reactions are very similar Sometimes you do get confused. Yeah, so two molecules of the aldehyde react with concentrated base. One becomes acid salt, other becomes alcohol. So now why we are using a concentrated high concentration OH minus, we'll just come to know once we do the mechanism. And essentially what we are trying to do is the aldehyde should not have the alpha hydrogen. Okay, because if you have alpha hydrogen, you end up getting an aldol reaction. And you can also know, call it a disproportionation because this is getting oxidized and this is getting reduced. And disproportionation is when the same molecule gets oxidized and a molecule of the same compound also gets reduced. It's called disproportionation. Okay. So uh, mechanism part. Now the, in the mechanism, you're basically going to have three steps. Step one, you have the aldehyde reacting with the hydroxide ion. And the hydroxide ion, we keep a high concentration because we want it to act as a nucleophile. Now one of the most essential things about a nucleophile and a base is that if you keep a good base, a strong base, low concentration, it tends to behave more as a base than a nucleophile because its ability to act as a base is much more easier because it just has to attack an acidic edge. At low, or low concentration, less attack will happen on the electrophilic side, therefore more chances for it to act as a base. But when you keep the concentration high, its basic ability remains more or less the same but the nucleophilic ability increases drastically because now there are more collisions with the carbon and therefore more successful collisions with the electrophilic side therefore more the ability to act as a nucleophile so this is going to act as a nucleophile here so this is going to attack here and this pi bond is going to shift to O to make sure the carbon has only tetravalency this is a reversible process and you end up getting what is known as a hydroxy alkoxide this is the hydroxy part and this is the alkoxide part. So this is the first step and um, this is the reversible attack and you get hydroxy alkoxide in this. In step 2, this hydroxy alkoxide meets another molecule of the aldehyde which is so far unreacted with the base. Now the O- attacks the carbon again. Now once this attacks, one of these groups is going to go, I mean maybe any of, the, of these three. But out of, out of H and pH, H has more migrating power with the electrons. So compared to OH and H, OH should migrate more easily because minus on O is more stable. So this comes back, OH minus leaves, chances are more. If that happens, OH minus coming back, OH minus leaving, you get the reverse of step one. You get back the reactant again, no reaction then. But instead, if the O minus comes, instead of OH minus, the H minus leaves. Now that's really hard to believe, but we'll, in just a moment, we'll, uh, we'll understand why it does so. This comes, and just imagine hydride were to leave. Now, hydride can never leave. It's not a good leaving group. It's a very, very strong nucleophile. But the reason it is leaving is because it is able to now simultaneously attack on the electrophilic site. 
Now, if you remember, when we did carbon ion rearrangements, we've seen hydride move from one carbon to the other. Now, hydride only leaves a molecule if it is immediately able to attack another electrophilic site. It is not going to go out like a normal leaving group, which will go and stay as it is. This is going to go only when simultaneously it, had, it can attack an electrophilic site and there is an electrophilic carbon. So this comes back, hydride leaves, H- immediately attacks this carbon and the pi bond shifts to O. And this, as you can very easily understand, is the weight determining step because to remove hydride is going to be very, very difficult. So this is a very, very slow step. Okay, So we call it the weight determining step. Now, in this step, the hydroxy alkoxide, you know, has been able to transfer the hydride and and um, uh, that H has attached to another molecule of the aldehyde. Now, if the same molecules are involved, we call it self canisaro If different aldehydes are involved, it's called cross canisaro Remember, the hydroxy alkoxide uh, on transferring the hydride becomes a carboxylic acid molecule, while second aldehyde becomes alkoxide. And in the last step, which is an irreversible proton transfer, this is a more acidic, strong acid, strong base, proton shift, we get a weak base and a weak acid. Alcohol is a weaker acid than carboxylic acid and carboxylate is a weaker base compared to the alkoxide. So this is the step three part of the mechanism. And it is this irreversible process that takes the entire process forward. Otherwise, the entire reaction is going to be remain reversible. Now, what we essentially need to understand in this particular mechanism is the molecule on which the hydroxide has attacked. That is the molecule which becomes the hydroxy alkoxide and that is the molecule which is going to become carboxylic acid and that is the molecule which is going to become a carboxylate ion. So the one on whom hydroxide attacks first becomes carboxylate and the other one becomes a benzyl alcohol in this case or an alcohol in this case. Therefore, this is the basic general mechanism of a canizaro reaction. Thanks for watching.